Kenneth says, Vicky, slowly pick up your bow. Sometimes you just give your wife the right spot. I am now a master angler. Thank you. The choice is about three things. Real hunting, going after the animal of your choosing with the weapon you learn. Real adventure, from the mountains of Canada to the desert to Mexico. But most of all, it's about real people. Hunters with families, jobs, and dreams. Their skills will be put to the test. Every situation is different. Success or failure. It all comes down to the choice. Drop the pass. That one's for you. Oh, yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to this week's The Choice. And yes. this week, The Choice is Manitoba Monsters. Ken Gagler's up in... Canadian Can Subarctic hunting. Yeah, I we're pumped. I, I mean, just because Big bears. you never know what kind of bear is going to no, walk through. It's going to be a lot of fun. This week's lucky logo is 10 points. Ten po somebody is going to win a 10-point crossbow. And, and you, a lot of other stuff. Oh, from tons of stuff, which it's is awesome. It's going to be awesome. And we'll tell you what to do if you spot that 10-point logo during the show. Yeah, now here's the deal. Yes. Is this spring was unbelievable. I mean, it just... We thought it was going to be so great, it was and then so weather early. got crazy, and then, and it then got snow in April up there. I mean, they they had all kinds of stuff, but I mean, bear hunting, fishing can't get better. No, it's, it's pretty cool. So, so let's you get made going. breakfast. I made breakfast. Let's have some food. Manitoba monsters. <laughs> A hot. Going up to that Manitoba wilderness is just, a, it's cool. It is cool, and you know, to go and fly in those big planes and landing on that gravel, that sand. That sand. It's I mean, crazy, and it's got us, I mean, they're always trying to make sure that it's hard. And it, so that I mean, that, that, listen, it takes a lot of people to keep that thing the it way does. it is. Because if it ain't right, they can't land. Everything has to be flown into this wilderness camp. Ken Gangler, it, it, it's a, just, a, it's a, it's a full-time job just to get the equipment in. Fuel, food. It, just everything. It all has to be flown in and that can get really expensive. It's absolutely amazing to see this giant lodge in the middle of nowhere. And we've talked about that for years. They have full mount bear, which is mine. And they have all kinds of other stuff up there. No, and they have like, they have tackle and all kinds of stuff. But you they could tie have, your own flies. It's, it's like five star dining. I mean, it's a- This giant lodge is in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely. I mean, there's caribou trails right through camp. How cool is that? Well, the main lodge is the center hub of all that's going on in that North Country at Ken Gangler's. And I mean, that main lodge, everything comes to. They have the planes come in, and from there, all of a sudden, Ken has all these planes, these float planes scheduled to take the fishermen to their lakes, the hunters to their lakes, and I mean, whew. Well, we got to the lodge, we met everyone else up in camp. We got our tag, signed for them, made us legal, went to our own little cabin, and you know what? It's time to get our bows and our equipment set up, grab some arrows, some broadheads, and let's fill up our quivers. You know, like any time we get in any camp, you know, we tried it that first day is not really, we're, we're not worried about hunting as much as we are scouting and getting things yeah, set and, up. and checking out the areas, checking out the bait sites, putting up cameras and stuff yep. like that. This bait hasn't been hit yet. Once it starts getting hit, we're gonna start moving our trail cameras around so we get a good reading of what's coming where and, and the situation and the timing. Looks like another good ground blind setup. It almost could be a, a sow and boar, and this is what you want here at Ken's is because when you got this, you never know what size boar that is. And that scat says it's a pretty good bear. This was actually one of the first stands we went to. Yeah, we went and we knew it was, I mean, it was I mean, torn it was up. Definitely Giant torn up. scat, big pad prints. I was like, it was oh, definitely, yes, baby, I gotta sit great. this. And you know what? There were so but, many mosquitoes there, I decided I should take my thermosel and sit there to help Ralph so he didn't get bitten by mosquitoes. <coughs> You're choking on a mosquito? We ran baits this morning and found one that's been hit. Um, Ralph has been so honorable to say that I can be up first, that that's what we're gonna do. Kenneth and I are heading out. Bye, darling. Wish me luck. Love Good you. Good luck. Thanks. We gotta go. There's a plane coming.
Hurry, hurry, hurry. We don't want the plane to run us over. Hurry, 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 hurry. First night here at Canadian Subarticonic. We ran baits this morning. This one was hit two days in a row. I believe it might be a boar and a sow. They really like to put all their baits right in there and their stands right on the edge of the water. One of the main reasons for this is there's no danger in the water for them. So if you're on the edge of it, more than likely they're not gonna try to go around you to do anything. It's really easy to pull the boat straight up here right behind the stand, get in, and then the guide can leave and not disturb anything else. It's obviously gonna be a pretty close shot. You know, the first night out, well, you know, me as a gentleman, I'm gonna let Vicky go hunting the active bait and we're gonna go work and check all our trail cameras to see if there was another bait active. Within the first 30 minutes, we had a big old no-brainer boar come walking in. Well, we're coming up to our bait site that we had. It wasn't hit hard, but we had two good piles of scat. And that's telling us that this bear's found it. He's eating it, but he can't eat a lot of it. His stomach's not ready for it. So we brought a ladder stand and our, one of our hang-ons we're going to set up because the wind's been different. So instead of using their permanent setup, we're going to use a portable. Well, we checked the trail cameras and we found we had an active site. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little honey burn. We're going to leave that site for that night just get some more scent around there and hunt that the next day. The first evening out, we sat in the stand and within the first 30 minutes, we had a big old no-brainer boar come walking in. He came straight in and laid down, and he laid there for almost two hours. And I was wondering if he was ever gonna get up, and all of a sudden we looked over, and here's another good bear coming in. He has scars all over his face. He knew that big boar was in front of us on the bait site, and he did everything he could to intimidate that big boar. He was cracking over trees. I mean, he was a pretty aggressive bear. That first bear, he got up and he took off. I will be back in that stand tomorrow night. You know, something that's special up at Ken's and some other bear camps in the springtime is, you know, not only do you have great hunting, but early part of the day and middle part of the day, you could be in some of the best fishing there is. And Ken has it, definitely. Lake trout, northerns, you, I mean, there he's, he's covered up with good fishing just as well as bear hunting. Years and years and years ago. How old are you? No, when I met okay. Vic, is you know she wasn't into she didn't like fish. You didn't I, like to eat fish. No, you didn't. I don't like to eat fish. I have always fished though. I've always loved to fish. You didn't catch nothing, but I mean you like to fish. Do. No, you didn't. Be honest. Then we we're gonna have a shore lunch, but they had to go to the master to figure out who would get the fish for the shore lunch. I'm not going to say who. You know,
know, I well, you I filled couple the cute, pans. You 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 caught a couple them. cute little lake trout. I filled Those them. Were nice, but the next day, you know. I filled them. I showed them what you're supposed to the really catch. The chips were down on one fish. side. I am now a master angler. Thank you. <laughs> you're a master. <laughs> We went over by, there's actually an old trapper cabin up along the shore, and so it's a little old building, and we were at, sitting there, they started, they just built this big fire, and they cooked that fish on that fresh open fire, and a can of beans, and a can of corn, and fresh caught fish on a shore, oh my gosh, that, that stuff was just unbelievably awesome. After I had my sights on that big guy that first night, that no-brainer, I decided to sit and wait. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Go to facebook.com slash Ralph and Vicky. Because of the logistics of flying, you know, different things in and out of different camps, what they use up there at Canadian Subarctic Hunting is popcorn. It actually makes a lot of sense. It's very light. They can they bring it in, they pop it right at the main camp, and then they fly it out to all the different camps. Another really great benefit of it is that it's not one big block or a big chunk of something, and the bears can't just come take it and run off and not give you an opportunity. What they end up doing is they end up sitting there and eating the popcorn one piece at a time. Not only that, if you're hungry and you're on your way out to check baits or go hunting, it's good for you too. We gotta go over here. The bait's been hit, it's not been pounded. Vicky's in stand, we're getting in stand, it's gonna be a good night. Well, we're back in the same night, same stand as we were last night. We had that big bear come in last night. Um, he laid in here for almost two hours. Then we had another bear that came in that had a whole bunch of scars on his face. And all heck broke loose and uh, they all disappeared, but the one that came in with the scars on the face, he wasn't as big as the big guy, so we're gonna hang out and see if that big guy will come back in this afternoon. So, and that scar-faced boar came back in, and you know, I had opportunity, but after I had my sights on that big guy that first night, that no-brainer, I decided to sit and wait. Sometimes you just give your wife the right spot. It's gonna be a long night, I know it. I can't, I can't even explain. The wind definitely picked up and uh, we're down to tonight, tomorrow night. Baits have pretty much shut off and we, I truly believe it's because of the rut. Now it's a waiting game. Well, we walked in this and we saw that it was pounded. It was pounded better than any day it's been pounded before since we got here. Got it all baited up. Robert took off. Dan and I are in this little tree and this wind is blowing. So if all of a sudden you hear a snap and you see the camera showing the sky, 
we didn't make it. I got a good feeling about the night. Might be for Vicky, but I got a good feeling about the night. Before we went out on the fourth night, I talked to Ralph and I said, you know, if that one with the scar comes back in, I think maybe I'm gonna take him. If he gives me the opportunity, I'm gonna do it. It's now about 5.30 would be my guess. I'll tell you exactly. Um, it's 5.35, pretty good guess. It's pretty darn windy outside. The waves coming over the lake were really pretty bouncy. Um, the bait has been hit again. I'd love to see that really big guy come back again that we saw the very first night. But that being said, we have to night tomorrow night. So if the one with all the scars come in, he's actually a really good bear also. Not as big as that big boy we saw the first night, but he's a good bear. I've been holding out, waiting, but if the one with the scars come in the night before the other guy does, I may be bringing home Scarface with me. <laughs> All of a sudden, Kenneth says, Vicky, slowly pick up your bow. And the big no-brainer started walking in. I couldn't believe that he came back in, and I just sat and was very patient for him to come back into the site. Well, that big boar, he came in and he presented me that quartering away shot and I took it and unfortunately I hit him a hair high and I know that I need to give this bear time. I want to cry. Do you know what I want to do? And I just like... <laughs> yeah, look at it. Oh, that just sucks. We waited for our guide to come back and pick us up in the boat. It was almost two hours later when he came to get us and we left. It's gonna be a long night, but I know that if we come back in the morning and blood trail it, I have a really good chance of recovering this bear. We got up early the next morning and got on that trail right away, and it wasn't long at all before Robert started yelling and said he had found him. What a relief. I can't, I can't even explain how good it felt to be able to recover that bear. Look at the hole. size of that. He is just oh my gosh. this. He's got the big Roman nose. Is beautiful. This is beautiful. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Ken, for having us up here. Thank you, Ronnie and Robert, for helping us find him. Thank you, Kenneth, Dan, Ralph, everyone. You know, sometimes you're in the right spot and sometimes you're not. And sometimes you just give your wife the right spot and you take it for the team. And it's looking like this trip is what I did. You know, I had a pine martin, so I did have some fur activity, but it wasn't happening for me. Manitoba Monsters, Ken Ooh. Gangler. You know what's crazy is... Canadian Subarctic. Yeah. That is a place for big bears. And again, Vicky gets a bear and you well... See the pattern going? Yeah, I see the pattern bears, going. Bears, You had fish, bears like all fish. around you. Bears, fish, fish. That's all you get. That's it. Hey, if you happen to see this week's Lucky Logo, which was 10 point. 10 point. Somebody is going to win a 10 point crossbow. How cool is that? That's very cool. You need to log on to choicetv.com. Click on the lucky logo button, fill out the information, and And a ton of it. other stuff. And a lot of other Thanks stuff. Thanks to all of our other sponsors. Yes. Can you believe this is show 13. 13 of the choice season? It's over. It is. But, but it's going to start again. We're not gone. <laughs> no, and we want to thank you guys, the big guy upstairs, of course. Yep. And you know, our sponsors, because without all of you and them and him, None of this would be possible. For thanks, thanks for making your choice. The choice. And we'll see you next, next time. time. So we should go hunt. We no. need more shows. Why don't you go clean the cabin? Why don't you clean the cabin? You got mud in it.